textured plastics, good looks, ugly proportions. Hold up, hold up. This is the last one. We gotta make this quick. This is Mazda. It's a brand we loved for their Dorito engines that were just as crunchy as the real thing. We loved their happy-faced, no-power Virgin Mobile, and their crackhead Speed 3 was always fun to be around. Their glue-sniffing owners excluded. But Mazda changed. Their Mazda 6 just became a more reasonable Camry. Their Mazda 3 is just a budget Golf TSI. And their new MX-5 is just a convertible BRZ. The issue is they decided to grow up with their owners, but their owners never grew up. They just got older and wealthier. On the subject of old, this is Chrysler. Actually, can we not do this one? They have like two cars in their lineup, and one of them will be discontinued next year. Let's not disrespect the dead. But a brand we do love to disrespect is Renault. They're not bad just because they're French, no, that's Peugeot. They're bad because their designs are so vanilla. They make Joe Biden look like a goth cheerleader. Their interiors are so uninspiring, they would turn whistling diesel into a detailing channel. And sure, they're not slow, but they're only fast enough to win the Special Olympics. At this point, buying a Renault is like buying a beta version of a car, yet somehow they managed to own the brand that used to own them. To be fair, the only thing worse than being owned by Nissan is owning Nissan. Speaking of better, this is Skoda. Their cars are not bad, but they're usually owned by someone's granddad. They usually get scrapped when they break down, or get passed down to kids who are down bad for a car to get around. A Skoda is just rebadged VW, with enough oil consumption for Greta Thunberg to strike you. You usually see them painted with spray cans, and if you think their check engine lights off, no chance. Their resale value was always diminishing, the new dent is always incoming, and they're so boring we had to ram to make them interesting. If money isn't an issue, get this. This is a Rolls Royce. This isn't a car you drive. This is a car you get driven in. They're not cheap because they're hand built. Could they be built by machines, you might ask, if you're a peasant? Well, yes, they could be, but why would they be? Sure, they share a lot of parts with the 7 Series, but what they don't share is the drivers, because Rolls-Royce owners don't want attention. That's why they all come with peasant blockers. By the way, we don't have launch control, sport mode, or tight steering. People who make too much money aren't childish like that. Except for these people. Just like Rolls-Royce, Bentleys are expensive, luxurious, and have sold out to the Germans. Unlike Rolls-Royce, their drivers have the maturity of Leonardo's girlfriends. They drive their cars like rentals and spec them out like fanny packs. It's partly Bentley's fault too, because they make cars which were born as luxury cars that identify as sports cars but look like boats. But to be fair, some of our drivers do get driven around, but it's mostly because their knees are weak and arms are heavy, with caviar on their suit already. Am I gonna have to rhyme this whole fucking video? This is Pagani. They make... Art. And look away, you can't. Really, man? It's getting lame at this point. But seriously, Pagani is very cool and we can't knock them for that. On the subject of knocking, or lack thereof, this is la- Lexus. They're not a complicated company to understand. They basically make Pro Plus versions of Toyotas, which somehow are even more reliable. They make three types of cars. They have the sports cars that are only appreciated way after production. They have the boring, reliable luxury cars, and they rebadge Toyota SUVs with the sole purpose of making them worse off-road. But for some reason, the moment they get old, they either become drift cars or winter beaters. But it could be worse. Just look at Infinity. They adopted the Lexus mindset of just rebadging their parent company cars, but with a twist. They're much less reliable with a tiny sprinkle of luxury. They also look a bit worse but they still somehow feel less like a rebadged Nissan and more like the bootleg version of a Lexus. It's hard to believe that Nissan, sorry I mean Renault, still thinks this brand should live. It's harsh, but it's true. God, that's hideous. Do you want to feel like you're always living in the White House? Well, this is Bill, this is Monica, 
I think you get the reference. Some brands like Ferrari and Lamborghini have specific colours. So does Subaru. They've chosen blue because it resembles the colour of their driver's balls when they try to do a launch. Fun fact, most of the allegedly recovered UFOs were shot down by a rogue Subi pistol. Most Subaru owners love the same things, like anime, eBay, thinking they can off-road, thin wallets, and battling Evos. Mitsubishi, Lancer Evo. Because that's the only car that matters, let's be honest. No one cares about this, but we love this. You see them on drag strips, race tracks, rallies, and at every car show, which is why it's hard to understand why Mitsubishi killed it off. And now Subarus are left without a buddy to play with. This is too sad, let's move on. McLaren. This has to be the most exciting supercar brand right now, because when you see one on the road, you don't know if it's driven by a new money maniac or a billionaire who needed to complete their collection. Their cars are made for handling and grip, but for some reason their drivers love drifting them. Probably because all their car knowledge comes from Forza. They also love lying about numbers, which is kind of cool to be honest. They're definitely not reliable or dependable, but they're supercars. Supercars are supposed to catch on fire, just ask Cody. They're supposed to drain their batteries, and like iPhones, they're not supposed to be fixed. That's why they hardly make any spare parts. But the most legendary McLaren ever made was this. And it was the fastest car in the world for 24 years straight. Until these two came along. Bugatti and that made a mockery of the top speed record. It was cool at first, until it wasn't. They both just kept getting faster, fatter, and more expensive. Sure, they look good, you can't say they don't, and they're objectively cool, but for some stupid, illogical reason, we would rather have a Supra. One, two, three, four. This is Volvo. It's a brand known for their timeless designs, their powerful, dependable semis, how ridiculously safe they are, how great they are at being sleepers, their expensive parts that are hard to find even in Sweden, and how many goddamn art teachers have them. But what made them famous back in the day was their sheer indestructibility. When a Volvo crashes into a building, the building gets totaled. If a Volvo is left outside, the ground will rust. Potholes hit Volvos. The only battle Volvos lose is with fire, and they're usually the ones who start them. They are owned by a Chinese company nowadays. Kudos to them for not changing. But Volvo isn't the only brand that resembles tanks. So do these two. In size, these sausages, that means they're inbred, are as American as it gets. They're fat. They're definitely not original. They're all just rebadged Chevys, but with more features to malfunction. Although their lives are pretty sad, they keep getting recalled in the first couple of years which ruins their resale value. And when they hit the 15 year mark, they're either ruined by kids or are sold at police auctions with extra ventilation, AKA riddled with bullet holes. Here are some not so honorable mentions, AKA brands that didn't deserve a full segment. Acura, the physical embodiment of it's who did it best, not who did it first. They were the first. Saab, inspired by fighter jets that were shot down. Smart. It would be smarter to buy a scooter. Fiat and Alfa Romeo. They still exist. Mini Cooper. Not so mini anymore. Suzuki. As sharp as a marble. Opel slash Vauxhall. GM's little black sheep kicked down to the French, aka the least German German brand out there. Lincoln. Ford's sophisticated brother with Chrysler's build quality. MG. A British brand built like phones by the Chinese. Holden. Loved by the Aussies, forgotten by everyone else. Aston Martin, a luxurious, sleek British brand who's only relevant because of James Bond. 